A to D converter or interface, whatever it is, like to me, that's kind of your central nervous system of your studio, you know? So everyone's gonna have different needs of, of what they need in their particular setup. What attracted me to the Antelope Orion 32 HD is, you know, one, the sound quality, that's gotta be the best. But then on top of that, just how much connectivity you get in such a small package, one rack space with no fan. I mean, that's insane to me. I think that now, because people are using A to D converters that are their interface and their monitor, maybe all rolled into one, I don't know that people really get to A, B, like what their converters are doing, you know? Um, I have something called a uh, Crane Song Avocet, right? And what that lets me do is have different sources going into my monitor controller. So I can feed, say, just my preamp or the output of a compressor or before it hits my A to D converter, I can feed that to my monitor controller and hear just the pure analog sound of the preamp or the source, right? And then I can switch between that and what's coming into the A to D and then back out of the A to D. So you can hear the difference between the pure analog signal and what the A to D converter is doing, you know? And I think that a lot of people don't necessarily get to hear that anymore. And so maybe they don't put as much thought into converters as they should be. Um, but once you hear that difference and you say, wow, like, I thought these converters were good, but like, look what it's doing to my signal. It's, it's losing all that bottom octave or it's losing like that air that was there when I hear it just coming out of the preamp, you know? And again, this is part of people recording at home and you know, you used to be able to hear it, you know, tracking on a console, you would just monitor from the console. And then that's kind of what started the whole, like once they started monitoring through the converters and it was like, what is happening? How come it sounds so bad, you know? But what I love about the antelope stuff is switching back and forth between the analog and then what's coming from the converters is there's no difference. I've had other converters where it adds this extra top and bottom. And you're like, wow, it sounds so much bigger than this other converter. And then you do your mix and you bring it into iTunes and then, or like whatever your player is, even if you're just playing it in Finder, right? And then you're listening to it on a different set of A to D converters and you're like, what happened to all that top and bottom that I was excited about when I ran it through these other converters and it's gone? Well, in my opinion, it's because the converters are adding something that aren't actually there in the recording. So when you're hearing it converted from digital to analog, you're getting that extra bit that's not real. So when you put it on a consumer machine, it's lost that little bit. So. That's something that I love about the Antelope stuff is that it's just totally transparent. And when I bring it from Pro Tools or whatever DAW I'm working in at the time, and then you bring it into you know iTunes or whatever it is, it sounds, there's no surprises. It's the exact same, especially some of the more detailed metal stuff. And your recall notes look something like, you know, at, at bar 75, there's one hi-hat clinch that happens. Can we bring that down 0.1 dB? You know, it's like, those are the type of recall notes you're making. And when people are listening and hearing 0.1 dB differences of a hi-hat, they can sure as heck hear the difference in the top and bottom that is not there when you go to print the mix. If you've watched those Eric Valentine videos, he actually goes through and runs like the same signal through his Orion. He has the same converters, the Orion 32 HDs. And uh, I think he runs it through like 20 times like back through and it nulls out and there's like no change. So, I mean, that's a pretty big testament of how transparent they are, which I think is important because I'm putting all the thought into, you know, the microphones, the, the actual drum itself or the compression, the EQ. And after I do all that work, I don't want it to be changed by something else, you know? So what goes into it is exactly what I want coming out of it.